second here. I want to be responsive. Okay. I'm not sure. Are you talking about the profile for this individual show or for my profile period? Because that is up. Uh, Dale writes, Nate, uh, Ray Tensing may have gotten that mentality from just pulling over black folks when working at the Green Hills PD. Because I live around the Green Hills area, and all I see is the Green Hills PD pulling over black folks. I myself have been pulled over by them. Yeah, yeah, I used to live in Green Hills myself. I used to live on Sawbrook Avenue. It's in Green Hills, so I'm, I'm very familiar with the Green Hills, uh, the Green Hills way. <laughs> Believe me, I'm very familiar with it. Could have been. What I would say is that if people were checking the analytics, they would have picked up on the pattern that uh, Ray Tensing was pulling over primarily African-Americans. And if the former police chief, Mr. Goodrich, had did his damn job, then perhaps Ray Tensing could have been stopped. He never should have been out there on the streets that day. OK, if if Mr. Goodrich said, hey, you know, I'm starting to notice something with this, Ray, you're pulling over primarily black folks. Maybe that would have given him a moment to pause and he never would have pulled over Mr. Sam DeBose. But we'll never know. Because that didn't happen. Uh, good morning, Brenda. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing, Ashley? She writes, good morning, team and I from Team Galt. <laughs> I like that. Ms. D writes, uh, Kasich is trying to convince us that he is back and doing some work. Just legalize it all. That's right, he is. He spent, what, nine months running around the country trying to get a better job. But now we're supposed to accept him with open arms? Please. I don't like this idea. I really don't. I think we should pass a, a constitutional amendment to legalize it all at once, legalize it for recreational use, legalize it for medicinal use. It doesn't make any sense for, for it to be legal medicinally and to be illegal recreationally. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You know what that is? That's people's preconceived notions. Some of these cats at the state legislature, right? Some of these Republicans that's running things state side. They've been watching too many rap videos and they think if you start smoking it up, everybody's going to turn into Tupac. When was the last time you heard of somebody getting pulled over in a car who committed some type of vehicle, some kind of crime in a vehicle and they were high on marijuana? Here's one question. Can I be fired for using medical marijuana? As I'm reading from Cincinnati.com, they write Yes. Despite opposition from some Democrats, the law would allow employers to fire employees who violate office policies against marijuana use. Even if the marijuana was recommended by physicians. If you are fired for marijuana use, you will not receive unemployment compensation either. That's not right. Uh-oh, 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 stop right here. Should you be protected? from your employer in the state of Ohio because you are taking medical marijuana at home. And since you can't take the parts that you can't smoke it, that's still illegal. Let's say you're taking some edibles, okay, uh, which is like gummy worms that's infused with THC. And from what I've been told, those edibles can be very, very powerful, even more powerful than smoking it because it's getting into your system in a different manner. Should your employer, let's say your job and you got chronic pain and you've got, you went through everything the right way and your doctor has legally prescribed you with some, some marijuana, some THC, we'll just say edibles. And let's say you get a random drug test at your job. Okay. And now, uh-oh, uh-oh, we got one here. We got us a dope addict, right? You smoking that dope? And now your job's on the line. You can't even get unemployment? And it's legal in the state? I mean, come on, that doesn't make a lot of sense. What does make sense is that employers are still going to be able to dictate what happens on the job site. You know, on the job site, they're still going to be able to dictate what happens here. So, for instance, alcohol is legal, but if you show up drunk at your job, guess what? You might get fired. You might get fired. And let's say they completely legalize recreational use, whatever kind of use. If you want to take a bath 
and marijuana oil every day, you go right ahead. You go right ahead. And you want to wash it down with some edibles, you go right ahead, okay? Let's say that's where we are. Employers can still determine what happens at the job site. So let, let's be smart about it. I mean, grown folks, we know the difference here. And I don't see that being a big issue. I really don't. There were several groups that were interested in placing a proposal on the fall ballot. And they have both decided, they have all decided against it now. The most prominent were the folks over at the Marijuana Policy Project and its local affiliate, Ohioans for Medical Marijuana. They dropped the bid just three days after senators passed the medical marijuana bill. Claiming that the effort was too costly and unpredictable in a presidential election year. What? I don't I don't understand it. Uh, during a presidential election year, more people are going to come out. Put it on the ballot. When you got more people who are voting on it, I think it skews more more to a more progressive side than when you've got less people who show up. Why not? It's, it makes perfect sense to me. They left us hanging. Ohioans deserve a chance to vote on this. And I think most Ohioans are going to agree that we don't want police officers to put themselves in harm's race. Here I, here I go again to my police officer friends. I'm saying something positive. I don't want police officers to put their lives, their most precious gift from God on the line for some damn marijuana. I'm just saying. Uh, good morning, Pat. She writes, made it. Good to have you. Ed writes, yep, I, I can hear you good, Nate, but I don't see the Ivy pick. It must just be my phone. Hmm. Ms. D writes, that's because the federal government still considers marijuana illegal. States can allow all they want, but federal laws still apply. They do apply unless you pass the law in that particular state. It will supersede the federal jurisdiction in that particular area. You've got many states already in which it's legal. <laughs> Kevin writes, I read this comment under your picture with the police chief. I thought it was so funny. All the older men want you to try their pie, LOL. This woman wrote you this. She said a very nice picture, and I hear you love Miss Nettie's sweet potato pie. Well, just remember that we are celebrating our 70th year in existence, and you might be able to get some sweet pie. You must get some of Lulu's sweet potato pie also, plus homemade cheesecake, my specialty. What? Is that on my Facebook page? Let me check that out. I, I didn't see that. And don't be jelly because women want to give me some sweet potato pie, okay? All right, don't be jelly about that. Uh, Someone writes, uh, there's some things people write about Mr. Alan Triggs. And I'll read that on Facebook. Let me go back here. Um... Uh, Oh, oh, okay, that's Bonnie. <laughs> she writes, a very nice picture, and I hear you love Miss Nettie's sweet potato pie. Well, just remember, we are celebrating our 70th year in existence, and you might be able to get some sweet potato pie, pie plus our parade on September 3rd, and we have a soapbox derby and gospel outside, and it will be a much nicer event this year. We invite both of you wonderful men to come and enjoy September 3rd and 4th. See you all there. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. See, you know, OJ's trying to make that something that it wasn't. See, OJ. <laughs> good to see you, Angela. She writes late, but I made it this morning. Good to have you. Jane writes, good morning, Nathan. Checking in from Florida. What? How's Florida? Enjoy yourself. Is that Are you down there regularly or are you just visiting? Good morning, Mr. Hollywood. Good to see you. What's up, Brittany? Good to see you as well. Okay, I want to make sure I recognize everyone. What's up, Jerrica? She writes, morning, y'all. Charles writes, the Cavs need to bring love off the bench. The chemistry they had last night was electric. Winning at home shouldn't be a problem, but they've got to steal game five to win it all. Hell, they've got to win game four first. How you doing, Brittany? Good to see you. Good to see you. Absolutely. They got to win game four first. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves first. Okay, folks, uh, I posted this uh, about Alan Triggs yesterday, and we are scheduled to catch up uh, very, very soon here on the show. I was glad I ran into him. As soon as I saw him, I walked straight over to him, introduced myself, and, and you know, he said, listen, I'm willing to come on, and we're going to make that happen. 
But some people are saying some things about him that are not too flattering. You can check it out on my Facebook page. You know, it is what it is. Everyone has an opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. Okay? You're entitled to your opinion. And I welcome the fact that you want to share on my page. Absolutely. It is what it is. And I'm not here to tell you who you who you should or should not vote for. Again, that's not my job. That's not what I do. I'll give you my opinion, and then you can decide for yourself after that. You know, pretty simple. And I'm on uh, the Facebook page. It's titled Inside Avondale. Okay, you're not hip to it. Avondale is on the come up. And I'm looking at all of the images that they put on there. I don't think I'm on any of these. I think somebody caught a photograph of me and somebody. I'm not sure it was. But I'm looking at all the images. I see the chief there. There were a lot of members of law enforcement who were who were actually playing in the game. There was some women out there that was pretty good at softball. And a lot of my former colleagues were there as well uh, that I ran into. Ran into a Freddie Red. Freddie, ran into Lincoln Ware. Uh, ran into a bunch of folks. Had a great time. And I'm on Inside Avondale right now. I want to see if they put any photographs of me up. I'm not trying to be narcissistic or anything, but I just want to know. I just want to know. I saw uh, Wendell Young was there as well. Uh, got a chance to powwow with him a little bit. Um, uh, No. Looks like I didn't make the cut. I'm okay. My feelings are not hurt because I didn't make the cut on any of the photographs on Inside Avondale. Okay, it's more about the events, not about me. Now, I think it was a great event. I had a great time. I had a real great time. Was anyone, did anyone show up? Were you there? Perhaps in the audience? My Brent writes, they can keep Love's powder puff ass on the bench. JR showed up and out. So now Love is a powder puff. Hmm. I mean, that's easy to say when you're winning. Had they lost, people would have said, well, they need Love out there. They need a little love in their life. Nate Ivy with you. I'm live, I'm local, and I'm vocal. This is the Nathan Ivy Show. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. Feedthepig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... <laughs> Sometimes, though. <laughs> you don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Now back to the show. All right, a lot of things to discuss. You know me, this show will never just be about politics. No show I ever do will just be about politics. Sharapova got on my radar screen because of some of the negative things and her outbursts about Serena Williams. I'm going to be straight up about that. Making comments about Serena, what she might be doing and not be doing. And it it just kind of irked me that Maria Sharapova, in terms of, you know, her winning percentage and actually winning grand slams is not on the same level of uh, Serena Williams, but yet she makes so much more money in endorsements. And I don't know if it's like a European thing. I don't know if it's like a geography thing or if it's just a race thing. I'm not sure. But she has been suspended from tennis for two years over a banned substance. And all I want to say is that if that were Serena Williams, it would have been as if the tennis world would have been imploded upon himself. Okay. Itself with all of the criticism. It would have been an avalanche of criticism. Let me go ahead and say that. If Serena Williams had tested positive for any banned substance, has Serena Williams tested positive for 